Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I would like to discuss with you the future prospects on total neoadjuvant treatment in rectal cancer, what is the optimal sequencing, and this from the radiation oncologist's point of view. So where do we come from? Today we give standard chemo radiation, which is defined as 45 to 50 gray in 25 fractions, combined with 5-FU or capecitabine, and then we leave an interval to surgery, and then our patients are operated. With this approach, the outcome is heterogeneous. We obtain around 15 to 20 percent of pathological complete remissions. These patients have a favorable oncological outcome, and as was discussed before, maybe organ preservation is an option for these patients. If we look at these patients, they have an overall survival, five years survival rate of around 70 percent. So distant metastasis in these patients remain a problem despite adjuvant chemotherapy, which is frequently uh, administered. So there is clearly room for improvement. We can try to increase tumor response and in that way have more patients eligible for organ preservation strategies or we can go for early administration of systemic therapy, hoping to obtain a better oncological outcome. And this is what we call total neoadjuvant treatment. So total neoadjuvant treatment means a combination of preoperative chemoradiotherapy with preoperative chemotherapy rather than adjuvant chemotherapy. And then we have a question on the optimal treatment sequence. Should it be chemo first, or should it be radiotherapy first? This approach has a twofold aim. We want to improve compliance to therapy, because we know from large randomized trials that the compliance to postoperative adjuvant chemotherapy is rather poor, and around 50 to 60 percent. And on the other hand, we want to improve disease outcome, and this can mean more organ preservation or a better disease-free survival for these patients. Now, if we go through the literature, we can find evidence for the two approaches. On one hand, chemo first, and the most important studies are the German trial, which is a randomized phase two trial, looking at four times K-POX followed by chemo radiation, versus upfront chemoradiation followed by four cycles of KPOX. We have the expert trial that looked at four times KPOX followed by chemoradiation followed by adjuvant capecitabine. We have the expert C trial where patients were randomized between four times KPOX with cetuximab followed by chemoradiation with cetuximab and adjuvant four cycles of KPOX with cetuximab versus without cetuximab. For the radiotherapy first approach, we have the big study from Garcia Aguilar, where she looked at different combinations with uh, chemotherapy, starting from no chemotherapy in the interval to surgery, to two times full FOX before surgery, four times, six times. And then we have the Polish two trial, which is a randomized trial looking at short course radiotherapy followed by three cycles of full FOX versus chemoradiation. What are arguments in favor of chemotherapy first? Well, there is an early introduction of treatment for micrometastatic disease. There is an increased compliance to chemotherapy if we compare it with the compliance in the post-op setting. In the Spanish trial, the compliance to chemotherapy was 94%. In the expert trials, it was between 87 and 94 percent, so much higher than what we are used to. What is against using chemotherapy first? Well, there is a potential decrease in compliance to subsequent chemoradiation, and there might also be an induction of accelerated repopulation, thereby hampering the effect efficacy of chemoradiation. 
What is in favor of radiotherapy first? Well, we avoid this induction of accelerated re repopulation by induction chemotherapy. There is an increased compliance to the chemo radiation. And it is still possible to early introduce systemic treatment for micrometastasis disease. Against is that the compliance to the chemotherapy might potentially decrease. But if we look at the data from Garcia Aguilar and from the Polish 2 trial, we see that the compliance to chemotherapy is still high and much higher than in the adjuvant setting. What about disease outcome? For the chemo first, if we look at five-year overall survival, there was no difference between the two arms in the Spanish trial. In the expert trial, it was 75%. If you look at five-year disease-free survival, again, no difference in the randomized Spanish trial, and in the expert trial, it was 62%. If you look at radiotherapy first, in the Garcia Aguilar series, five-year overall survival and disease-free survival is not reported. In the Polish trial, we see that five-year overall survival is superior in those patients that got short course radiotherapy with chemo in the interval. But if we look at five-year disease-free survival, strangely, there is no difference between the two arms. So we have no head-to-head -head comparison, and most of the studies focus on pathological outcome, and so we can, based on these studies, not conclude which strategy is preferable. What about pathological complete response? When chemo is administered first, there is no difference between the two arms in the Spanish trial. If you look at the expert trial, it's 20%. There was no standard arm, but this is very comparable to what we are used to in the standard setting. And in the expert C arm, the PCR rate was on the low side. If you look at the radiotherapy upfront followed by chemo, we clearly see that there is a relationship with the number of cycles of chemotherapy in the interval to surgery and the pathological complete response rate. It was only 18% in the standard arm and it goes up to 38% in the arm where six cycles of Folfox were administered before the surgery. In the Polish trial, the PCR was 16% in those patients that got short course followed by full dose chemo versus 12% in the standard arm. So here again, we see a variation in PCR rate, but this might be due to heterogeneity in the patient cohorts, heterogeneity in treatment, timing of the interval to surgery is different between all these studies, and this for sure has an impact on the rate of PCR, and we lack randomization. So again, it's difficult to draw conclusions. So is this then the clash of the titans without clear winner. Luckily, very recently, this randomized phase two trial was published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology, where chemo radiation plus induction chemotherapy was compared to consolidation chemotherapy in locally advanced rectal cancer. And this is a design of the study. So group A, these patients got induction chemotherapy, three cycles of Folfox, followed by chemoradiation based on 5-FU and oxaliplatin based on the results of their earlier phase three study looking at the benefit of oxaliplatin in this setting. Group B, these patients were treated with upfront chemoradiation followed by three cycles of Folfox followed by surgery. This is a phase two trial, and the design was a pick the winner. The hypothesis was that the increased PCR rate of 25% after total neoadjuvant treatment compared to the standard 15%. This is the consort diagram of the trial, and you can see that 311 patients were randomized, and the majority of the patients underwent surgery 142% uh, patients in both arms. For the chemo first, we see that chemo radiation related grade three to four toxicity was 37%. For the radiotherapy first, 
this of course was lower, was 27%. If we look at compliance, with chemo first, the compliance to the chemo radiation was acceptable, especially for the radiotherapy dose and the concomitant 5-FU, and of course the compliance to the induction chemo was very high, 92%. If we compare that to radiotherapy first, we see that the compliance to consolidation chemo is somewhat lower, while the compliance to the chemo radiation is higher. But most importantly, when radiotherapy was administered first, the PCR rate was 25%. So this, in this trial, was the winner. Main findings from this trial is that we have lower toxicity and higher chemoradiation compliance if radiotherapy is administered first. The fact that they use 5-FU and oxaliplatin might contribute to an increased toxicity to chemoradiation and a reduced compliance, especially if induction chemo is given first. There is a higher compliance to induction chemo if chemo is given first compared to consolidation chemo. Higher PCR rate was only true if radiotherapy was given first. But we should be aware that the interval to surgery was 90 days if chemo radiation was administered first compared to only 45 days if chemo was administered first. So this might influence the PCR rate. And the question still remains, does this higher PCR rate translate into a better oncological outcome? And for that, we have no data yet. And it could be that the worst compliance to consolidation chemotherapy could impact disease-free survival. So the winner has been identified. Has he? Well, different total neoadjuvant treatment regimens for di are used for different therapeutic goals or for different patient groups. If we want to go for organ preservation or for sphincter preservation strategies, maybe it's better to go for an approach where chemoradiation or radiation is given first. While if our patient has a high risk of micrometastatic disease, it might be better to start with upfront chemo and we still need long-term oncological outcome. We also need better molecular risk stratification. We need validation of high-risk imaging features such as extramural venous invasion and positive lymph nodes. There is a need for liquid biomarkers that can guide our treatment. But we should also keep in mind that we should try to reduce the risk of overtreatment in low risk diseases if we move to a no total neoadjuvant treatment. There are several ongoing trials that will hopefully solve the issue in the future. One very nice trial is the German trial, and this is the design of the German trial where they compare classical chemo radiation, of course, in Germany with 5-FU and oxaliplatin, followed by surgery six to eight weeks later, and then adjuvant chemotherapy depending on uh, the response to the primary treatment. And they compare this with 5-FU oxaliplatin standard course of radiotherapy, and then 4-FOX in the interval to surgery. The primary endpoint of this trial is disease-free survival, and patients that show a complete clinical remission at the time of surgery can go for an organ preservation strategy. And with this, I would like to close and thank you for your attention.